Radio. What is it? When did it begin? Where is it going? Radio is a phenomenon that has enthralled all of humanity since its conception. It came into existence from different inventions such as the telegraph and the telephone. Scientists perfected how a little wooden box and radio waves can connect to one another. Since then, the radio has undergone a huge transformation from what it originally was, but the ultimate goal of the inventors is the same, to captivate the world and to captivate individuals. Radio evolved from the inventions of the telegraph in 1844 by Samuel Morse and the telephone in 1876 by Alexander Graham Bell. By 1888, the German physicist Heinrich Hertz demonstrated in a laboratory the existence of radio waves. When the new concept of radio was introduced early in the 20th century, it created a revolution. Key element of radio was first an understanding that there were radio waves. Uh, this is James Clark Maxwell in the 1860s, and he describes the, the elements of non-optical radiation and that this should be available. Heinrich Hertz in the 1880s produces radio waves. And then it's a bunch of people in the 1890s, Marconi, of course, Nikola Tesla, and others who are experimenting in various ways to make this a practical uh, device where you can send a radio wave from here and receive it over here efficiently. Guglielmo Marconi did exhaustive tests to demonstrate that radio waves would in fact travel through the air. Once a signal such as Morse code or voice transmissions were added, it was discovered that this wireless signal frequency could be transmitted to a receiver. In the year 1898, Marconi sent his first radio message across the English Channel, a distance of nearly 20 miles. The implications of this wireless telegraph were enormous. Ships in the middle of the ocean could now send distress signals at the first sign of trouble a feat previously impossible with the wired telegraph. The first live radio broadcast was sent over the airwaves on Christmas night in the early 1900s when ships at sea heard the song, O Holy Night, playing on a violin as scripture was being read. Commercial radio made its debut in the 1920s. Having no precedence, experimenters and entrepreneurs were unsure about what kind of programs people would like to hear. The inaugural broadcast at the NBC radio network, a gala event, was attended by more than a thousand celebrities. The tone was proper and formal, and for several years, radio broadcast emphasized classical or semi-classical music and historical drama. Commercials were brief and discreet. I was driving the fastest the car will go now, and oh yeah, I is your best man, son. A trend began in 1928 by two actors from Chicago, whose serial names Amos and Andy quickly became a hit. In this second stage of programming called the Golden Age of Radio, the airwaves were filled with action-adventure series. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? The shadow knows. <laughs> Other action series that aired during this time included The Green Hornet and Death Valley Days as well as comedies by entertainers such as Jack Benny, Fred Allen, George Burns, and Gracie Allen. By the end of the 1920s, radio had officially become a cultural phenomenon. Around, around she goes. And Schmeling is down. Hey! is beaten in one round. Even Albert Einstein was asked his thoughts on the phenomenon that is called radio. He said, you see, wire telegraph is a kind of very, very long cat. You pull its tail in New York, and its head is meowing in Los Angeles. Radio operates exactly the same way. You send signals here, they receive them there. The only difference is, there is no cat. 
the impact that radio had on the world became apparent when a nationwide panic occurred after the airing of Orson Welles' War of the Worlds. We now return you to Carl Phillips at Grover's Mill. Ladies and gentlemen, here I am. Wait a minute, something's happening. Oh, I'm to turn you to play. Ah! The War of the Worlds broadcast showed the world exactly how effective radio was becoming. Through the years, radio changed dramatically. With the invention of the television, the format of radio changed drastically from what people were originally used to. Many radio shows, such as Amos and Andy, went to television. The audience didn't want to just listen to the show when they could actually watch it for themselves. Radio became what we know it today. Today, radio has many different formats such as modern music, political talk, classical music, sports talk, and many more. People even began to pay to listen to radio with the invention of satellite radio. With satellite radio, audiences can find any type of music, talk shows, sports shows, and even a few television stations simulcast wherever they are in the country. Radio is no longer the way people remember it, but innovators are still coming up with different ways to keep radio captivating the world. Radio is new and we are learning about the effect it has on people. Radio itself may have captivated the world, but what made it a phenomenon was how it touched the hearts of listeners with its variety and dependability of the shows it played. People had their favorite shows because they could identify with the characters. Shows such as Amos and Andy, The Shadow, and The Lone Ranger became regular shows in the homes of millions of Americans. People would even plan their evenings around when their favorite shows were coming on. We would listen to Adventures in Odyssey on the radio usually. Um, we would listen to it live if we could eat dinner actually at a decent time, around 6. But if we couldn't, my mom, when she was making dinner, she'd always record the show. And whenever we did eat dinner, she, we would play it. And um, she'd get up from her chair and she'd fast forward through all of the commercials. And we'd get done with the show pretty much just right in time for dinner to be over and us to get on to doing our homework and stuff. Our family, we just enjoy a lot of time sitting as a family around the dinner table listening to a radio drama, listening to um, the radio and the stories that are on the news, but especially just uh, The Lone Ranger was another one we absolutely loved. And um, my favorite, I would have to say, the one that had the biggest impact and me wanting to go into media especially, was uh, The War of the Worlds and the impact that had on people at that time. And it made me definitely think, how can I have an impact, especially for Christ? How could I have an impact at, like that particular radio drama did? We used to air on the first station I worked at, by the way, and it was Art Linkletter. And Art Linkletter um, still still does things today. Of course, he hasn't done a radio broadcast in, in a number of years. But I always thought it was interesting how he could sit down and talk to any child and find some way to pull out the humor in that child. And I took a lot of inspiration from that in, in, in this thought, in that there's no one on this planet that you can't talk to at least for five, ten minutes and get to know and learn something about them and uh, build some type of relationship. Because Art Linkletter um, was, was probably about my age when he was in his heyday with these children. So, I mean, he's, he's talking to people that are several years younger than he is, but he found a way to, to get into that child's mind and to pull something out. Um, you know, kids say the craziest things, you know. Radio today still plays a big role in people's lives. Many Americans still have their favorite shows that they love to listen to, even if they're not the same type of shows from years past. Going on trips and stuff, my grandpa was always listening to Rush Limbaugh, and that's kind of what got me into political stuff, because at every trip, that's all we'd hear, Rush Limbaugh. And that was, he was kind of hard of hearing, too, so even if I was trying to take a nap, it would be blaring. So, and now that's, we listen to Sean Hannity together sometimes. I try to listen to the radio. I, that's just a way of keeping me informed. I like more political type stuff, Limbaugh and Hannity, like I said, or Riley when he was on. One of the programs that is still being produced today that I have enjoyed many, many times over and for many years is Paul Harvey. 
an individual that um, I believe is a Christian, uh, maybe maybe not the same brand as as um, we might associate with folks that that uh, we're around most of the time, but uh, I believe he is a Christian. Uh, he has been a standard for a certain style of broadcasting. Uh, just sitting down and having a chat. If you think of FDR and the fireside chats, well, Par Harvey is the professional doing it. And he really has been a sounding board for the soul of the nation in his Paul Harvey news and comments, um, his uh, rest of the story, which just is, is fantastic and, and just wonderful and still today uh, has people listening to it. Uh, Paul Harvey has just been uh, one of those broadcasters through the years with his program, and I still listen to it as, as often as I can. The advent of the television era in the 1950s drastically changed the role of radio. As one observer commented, the radio sets were displaced from the living room and had to be content with the bedroom, the bathroom, the car, or even the beach. Radio became increasingly a vehicle for popular recorded music played by disc jockeys who combined pop hits with drive time features such as local news, weather, and traffic reports. The introduction of the compact transistor radio helped enhance the portability and popularity of the medium. In the 1960s, FM radio expanded dramatically, stimulated in part by growing listener interest in the high quality of FM broadcasters. By the early 1990s, approximately 13,000 radio stations were on the air in the United States of America. Some are part of the national commercial networks, but most are local, supported by local advertising revenues. Of the non-commercial, publicly funded stations, some are attached to colleges and universities, some share programming within a region, and some are part of the national public radio network. So where will radio be in the years to come? It will always be a, a fan, a, just the kind of family that will get together with music and definitely radio dramas because stories have to be passed on and if we don't pass on stories they die and I want my family to be able to enjoy the things that I enjoyed and grow up the way I grew up because my childhood yeah I mean no child is perfect but I really love what I had it has made an impact to the point where I have wanted to go into broadcasting myself I, I want to go out and make the impact on other people that it made it on me. That way, I can spread the gospel of Christ around the world. I see great things happening in the future. I, I, I have, I've gone through a few periods there where we thought, boy, radio is going to die on the vine, and it never did. It has always flourished in, in one form or another. And of course, uh, as we see satellite radio uh, take off here in the uh, in the 90s and now into into this uh, new century, um, we're breaking new ground here uh, with two satellite services. Now, uh, will they will they be in the future? And that's really hard to say. Will we have two, or will we have 10 or 15, or will we be down to one? It'd be interesting to see what happens. The Evolution of Radio was brought to you from Pensacola, Florida by students at Pensacola Christian College. It was written, produced, and edited by Joshua Hayes and Kennedy LaFave. You were guided through this documentary by Kennedy LaFave. I want to begin by thanking those interviewed. Mr. Wider, thank you for sharing your extensive knowledge of radio with us. I want to also thank Sarah Haywood and Sarita Dunn for sharing a part of your lives with us and telling us how radio has affected you. The violin instrumental was played by Nathan Watts, and the information for compiling the script, along with the sound bits necessary to share the past with listeners, was brought to you by those at History.com. I extend a very special thank you to others who were involved in this production. We really appreciate the time you took out of your schedule to help us out and to be a part of our passion of radio.